This is my Morocco travel vlog. Part five, Fez. Hey everyone, my name is Haley, and this is Plain de Champagne. Your solo girl's guide to travel. After leaving the incredibly beautiful blue city of Chefchaouen, we headed to the country's cultural and spiritual center, Fez, or Fez, as the locals would say. If you want to see me arriving in Marrakesh, exploring Essaouira, Casablanca, and Rabat, or getting lost in the blue city of Chefchaouen, you can find those links in the description. We left Chefchaouen after lunch and arrived in Fez by nighttime. We dropped our bags at the hotel and then went out for a unique dinner with my travel talk tour group. Well, it was really more of a dinner show with non-stop entertainment from the time you walk in the door. Fun. But don't get me wrong, it's definitely geared for tourists. But the building itself was really incredible. And if you're with a good group, you'll definitely get your $25 worth. Between the family style food they offer and the laughs, lots and lots of laughs. The next day, we had a tour of the city. We're not going to the beach, so don't talk about that. Let's go to the Fez. Fez. Let's go get away. Hey, say what they want to say. Have a drink, drink. You can not, not, <laughs> not really, because it's dry. Not really, because we can't. Not really, because we can't. We started off at the Royal Palace of Fez. Well, the doors of it, anyway. It's not open for tours, but you can marvel at the ornate details of its seven front gates. We then drove up a hill to this castle. The castle itself was under heavy construction, but the view of the Medina from up here was incredible. A Medina is a distinct historical city center, and the Medina in Fez dates back to the 9th century. It's considered one of the most extensive and best conserved historic towns in the Arab Muslim world. But we'll get to more of that in just a minute. Before heading down into the Medina, we stopped by the Pottery de Fez. It's a pottery and mosaic cooperative employing more than 60 families in Fez. We learned all about the multi-step process of pottery making. They even spin the wheel by foot. This is an outdoor kiln that they treat the pottery in. I think as Americans, we often overlook the craftsmanship and artisanship that goes into creating pieces like this. They are literally laying stones one at a time by hand. So I just urge you to remember that it's worth paying more for good value. Seek out local artists like this to help small communities grow. As promised, next we entered the Medina. Have you ever seen the movie Aladdin? It's not the movie setting or anything, but this gave me major flashbacks to the One Jump Ahead song. One jump ahead of the bread line. Riff raff, street rat. It's a maze of winding alleyways that would be near impossible to navigate without a guide. A walk through this Medina is like a walk back in time.
These well-preserved medieval buildings have very high walls. This makes some of the alleyways very dark, which can be kind of creepy. But it keeps them surprisingly cool in summer months. Also, the streets are extremely narrow. So bikes, donkeys, and mules are your only options for transportation. That's right, no cars. They say when you're moving furniture in, that it's better to go from the outside on top of the buildings than to carry it through the streets because they might be too narrow to get your furniture inside. I even heard that some inhabitants have lived their entire life without ever venturing outside of this Medina. I should mention that you should be extremely careful of pickpockets and I would recommend going with a guide. While inside, we were able to peek into this mosque, which also holds a university. And not just any university, but the oldest existing, continually operating higher educational institution in the world. The theme of the day was undoubtedly craftsmanship. And that was especially true at this scarf store. And unlike many scarf vendors you'll come across on your travels, this is the real deal. Weaved with the type of silk unique to Morocco. It's from agave plants. They showed us how to tie them around our heads, which came in handy when riding a camel in the Sahara. You have a big head, my friend. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? It's only his head who is big? No, no. <laughs> or only his heart? Ah, oh, see. Thank you. Or his, his heart. heart. Dirty mind. So, I bought one, and I believe it was around 30 US dollars. After that, we had some lunch. I got a pastilla again. If you're curious as to what this is, I talk about it in my video here. Last but not least, we went to a tannery. This is where leather is dyed and processed. Actually, this tannery dates back to the 11th century. But brace yourself, it could be a little bit stinky. A key component to the process includes animal feces and urine. Oops, did I just ruin leather products for you? I'm sorry. But this place was pretty cool and there were some great leather products. Although, be ready to haggle with the prices. We finished off the long day with a drink by the pool. And by the same time the next day, I'd be riding a camel in the Sahara Desert. But that's for the next video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to stay updated on when the next Morocco video is coming out, make sure you hit that little bell. And as always, you can find links and more information to all of these places on my website at plaintochampagne.com. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>